stop your little game We are the boys who will make you think again Cause who do you think you are kidding, Mr. Hitler If you think old England's done Mr. Brown goes off to town on the A21 But he comes home each evening and he's ready with his gun So who do you think you are kidding, Mr. Hitler If you think old England's done Keep it down, keep it down, keep it down Right, settle down Pay attention. First of all, I want to apologise for the fact that we're all packed in here like sardines, but uh, it's Warden Hodges' night for the use of the hall, and I'm afraid I can't do anything about it. Now, what I'm going to show you is very highly secret. Uncover the board, Wilson. Can I tell <clears throat> Yeah, just a minute. One moment. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Come Oh, yes, that's awfully good, sir. It's quite surprising. <laughs> All right, thank you, Wilson. <laughs> now, can anybody tell me what this represents? Are you going to write a song, sir? Oh, no. <laughs> that's a good idea, a song. A platoon song. We had one in the Sudan, you know. Yes, all right, yes. thank you, uh, yes. Oh, Lord Kitchener, he may look very odd. <laughs> in spite of what the people say, I don't think he's... That's a... all right, no, thank you. <laughs> Oh, so <laughs> this is it, ma'am. A highly secret invasion warning device has been set up along the coast, not very far from here. Its purpose is to detect enemy boats and uh, landing craft long before they reach the shore, so as to give us the vital time needed to prepare our defences. Now, all this information goes to GHQ along these wires, which are patrolled day and night by regular troops. Our next weekend, we are taking over the two-mile stretch, which is in our area, for 24 hours. Now, I needn't stress the responsibility that this task entails. Any damage to those wires could affect the entire course of the war. Um, uh, uh, sorry to bother you, Captain Maverick. I just want to finalise arrangements for the church parade on Sunday. Well, I'm afraid it's going to have to be cancelled, uh, Vicar. We shall be out on secret duties. Oh, are there any guarding some silly old telephone wires? Mm. That's classified information. How did you get hold of it? See this white hat, mate. Chief ARP warden, that's how I know. Believe me, Vicar, we're very upset that we can't come to church. Well, I'll come out to you. We'll have a simple service in the open air. Oh. But we haven't got any transport, Your Reverence. Oh, dear, I forgot that. Ah, oh, what a pity. I'll run you out there, Vicar. Why don't you mind your own business? <laughs> here we are, here we are again. Fight the man to come in again. Thank you, Sergeant. Where the hell's that relief force got to? They're late. <laughs> oh, Lord, the roads are. We'll have to take a diversion. Don't be absurd, Wilson. Look at the map. Now we've stopped, Captain Manning. Do you fancy a cup of tea? Oh, thanks very much. Not no, according to the map, our destination's about a mile straight up the road. As we can't get through, we'll have to take the diversion. But it'll take us miles out of our way. We're already late as it is. Pike. Yes, Miss Manning? Take that sign down. We're going through. All right. Do you think that's wise? Believe me, I know the British world. All that stuff's been put up just to spin the job out. The room's as sound as a bell. But what about the pipes? We drive over them fast enough, we won't feel it. The trouble with you is we haven't got a scientific mind. Do you mind if I get out and walk? Please yourself. Ready, Miss Manreed. Well done, Pike. Tea, Captain. Ah, thank you, Pike. Right, Jones, back up and drive like hell. Mr. Turn, back up, drive like hell.
happened to that relief force? That ten minutes late. What's that dirty old butcher's van doing, sir? I have no idea. Tell them to move on. Or you! Get off out of it! We're waiting for the relief force! We are the relief force! <laughs> Very good, sir. Here are your orders. Oh, thank you. Uh, now, Captain, I can't stress too highly how important those telephone lines are. They must be guarded with your life, understand? Yes, sir. Uh, by the way, why were you late? Oh, uh, well, we, uh, we had a bit of trouble with the van. Oh, you had to get out and push, did you? Well, it's, uh, it certainly made you sweat. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> nice young chap. Jumped up a little upstart. <laughs> right, man. Put your kid in the command post. Yeah. <coughs> What's that dreadful smell? Hmm? It's probably coming from that pile of rotting straw. Why has it been left there? Oh, getting ready for muck spreading, I suppose, still. It's a nice, healthy smell. Right, stand by for orders. Right, you hear what the officer said? Stand by for orders, platoon, at the double. Come along now, at the double. Right, sir, platoon is now standing by at the double for orders, sir. Fraser, you will be in charge of cooking. Ah, there's just one thing, sir. The porridge for tomorrow's breakfast will have to be put on soon so that it can simmer all night. Very well, put it on then. Well, if you're uh, wanting some trout for supper, sir, I don't think I can put it on. I don't quite follow. You see, sir, there's a well-stocked trout stream just half a mile from here. Ah. That's why I brought my rod. But well, that'll be poaching. You can't allow that. Oh, no, no. Hmm? Fish are all right. It's only poaching if it's beasts and birds. There you are, is he? Oh, this is absurd. <laughs> Look, Fraser knows what he's talking about. He's a countryman, born and bred. Not a townie like you. Well, all I know is that my cousin had a gamekeeper once, and he used to tell me that... Look, I'm uh, not interested in any of this. <laughs> stuff. There's a war on. We're troops on active service, and we're entitled to live off the land. Have you got some corned beef? I don't like corned beef. <laughs> Carry on, please. Sir. Mike! Sir. You've cooked the porridge. Oh, right. Yes, yes, yes. Just take notes, son. We don't want any watery porridge, so it's one jug of water to one mug of porridge for every person. Have you got that? One jug to one mug, yeah? That's <laughs> Right, now, arrangements for sleeping. Oh, no. Now, what we do it? Wait a minute. No, you could Show me your souls. All right, now. Stand back, stand back, for heaven's sake. What are you doing with your playing at? Stand back. Look, I'll take the top bunk, and Captain Manning will take the bottom bunk. Just a minute, just a minute. You're taking a rather lot on yourself, aren't you? Eh? <laughs> who gave you permission to decide who'll sleep where? Now, look, this is a democratic unit, and we will make our decisions in a democratic manner, right? Right. That means I take the top bunk, and you take the bottom. <laughs> Going pokey? Oh, simmering along nicely. Mm. Bit thick though. Yeah. <laughs> but we don't want runny porridge, do we? No. It's good stuff, porridge, isn't it? Yeah. I remember once when we was in the Sudan, we'd been marching through the desert for days and days and we was all exhausted when suddenly a Scottish soldier fell down on the ground and we all halted and General Kitchener come riding up on his horse. What's going on, he says. <laughs> Mr. Joe, why is it whenever you tell a story about General Kitchener, you put your hand on your hip? <laughs> well, that's the way he used to stand all haughty. <laughs> what? <laughs> why? Well, I don't want to go into all that now, Pikey. <laughs> Now, where was I? You made me lose my thread. Uh, oh, Scottish soldier lying on the ground. Oh, yes. So he was lying on the ground, and he looked up and he says, Oh, OK, OK, he ejaculated. <laughs> oh, I can't go on, I can't go on. That is Scottish, but I can't go on. <laughs> stop it, nonsense, says General Kitchener. Uh, again, I... Oh, stop it. <laughs> 
that that nonsense, he said. You want to take more attention to your national hero, Robert the Bruce. When he was lying in a cave, he was going to give in when he saw a spider trying to climb to the ceiling. Fifty times that spider tried, and eventually he succeeded. And Robert the Bruce was determined to succeed like that spider. Suddenly, the Scotsman jumped up. Yuru, yuru, and he started to jump up and down. That's better, said General Kitchener. That story has lifted your morale. But it wasn't that what lifted his morale. You see, a, a scorpion had climbed up his kilt. <laughs> What's that got to do with porridge? <laughs> Just think, Mr Jones. All those telephone wires carrying all those secret messages. Yeah. All them secret messages. Hello? Coming to the pictures with me tomorrow night, Doreen? No, I'm not. You're all hands. Oh, come on. Be a sport. Well, all right, then, if you promise to behave yourself. Great. Where will we go? The regal or the Odeon? I don't know. Just think of it, Pikey. Going along that, them lines at this very moment, there are messages and decisions being made which could alter the whole course of the war. Yeah. Oh, come on, Doreen, make up your mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not fussy. You decide. Right, then. The regal. It's darker. <laughs> Here they come again. Mikey. Go and wake Mr. Manrin. Right. Here, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't shout, you might give him a start. Wake him quietly. Quietly, <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. considering he's never made porridge before. Mr. Mary. <laughs> Don't speak to an officer with your mouth full. Hmm? What, what do you want me to do? With all the porridge that's left over. What are you talking about, Pike? Come and have a look. What oh, earth did you make all that much porridge for? There's enough there for a hundred men. Well, I only did what Mr. Fraser said. One jug of oats to one mug of water. <laughs> I said one mug of oats to one jug of water. You stupid bum. <laughs> Look, sir, the, uh, the vicar's coming. What? Oh, Lord, I've forgotten all about that. Right, let's get it over as quickly as we can. Jones, yep. assemble the men for a service. For a service, get around. That's the double. You take these, will you, Mr. Edmund? Yes, Your Reverence. I'll help you out, Vicar. Morning, Vicar. Oh, morning, Mr. Merrick. It's looking a bit better now, isn't it? Yes. Uh, hand the prayer books out, will you, Mr. Edmund? Yes, Your Reverence. Well, I'll go and have a smoke, Vicar. I'll come back when you're finished. Don't you feel the need of some <laughs> spiritual uplift, Mr. Hodges? You mind your own business, Napoleon. <laughs> <laughs> Please stay, Mr. Hodges, for my sake. Come and join the park. 
<laughs> Brethren, we are gathered together in the true spirit of comradeship and brotherhood. Let us give thought to those things above that control our destiny. Let us raise our faces to heaven and give thanks. <laughs> Good Lord. He is indeed Captain Matthew. Heavens above. I'll do the praying, Mr. Yale. Take care of Good heavens! <laughs> How did that bomb get up there, Captain Manrin? It must have happened during the raid last night. It could blow up at any minute. No, 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 it's perfectly safe where it is. It needs to strike the ground with considerable force to explode. But if it does slip, the explosion could bring down the pole and the wires with it. Shall I inform GHQ, Mr. Manrin? Oh, I ought to tell them something. No, no, we'll handle it ourselves. But I think we should tell the post office first. There's a phone box about a mile down the road. Would you like me to sprint down and telephone? <laughs> Mr. Speak, sir. Shall I take my van? No, I want, I want you to stay here. Sponge! Yes, sir. You go. Right, Captain Menring. You be careful of my van, Sponge. <laughs> Where have you been, Sponge? You've been gone for more than an hour. I'm sorry, Captain Menring. After I'd made the phone call, I couldn't get the van started. I've had to run back. What have you done to my van, Sponge? I've done nothing to it. Be quiet, Jones. What did the telephone people say? They said they, they'd send a team of experts along right away. That was over an hour ago. Well, perhaps that's him now. <laughs> <laughs> Does he look like a team of experts from the GPO? Morning. GPO. What's the trouble? Well, they said they were sending a team of experts. <sighs> I may not be an expert, but I know what I'm doing. <laughs> well, what are you doing about that, then? Oh, no, 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 no. That's outside my territory. I shall have to report back. You mean you're refusing to go up? That's right. In that case, I shall requisition your letter. Jones, Pike, go and set it up. Sir. Now, look here, my man. I don't like your attitude. And I'm going to report you to your superiors. You can report me to Winston Churchill, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Ready, Miss Manreen? <laughs> you stupid boy. The ladder's too short. Come back out of the danger area. Where's the rest of that ladder? There is no more. Then how do you get up the pole? Use the leg irons. Get them for me. Right. But you'll never be able to get up there with those leg arms. I'll be the judge of that, Wilson. All we've got to do is tie some rope round the bomb and lower it to the ground. Now, men, I'm not asking for volunteers. I'm going up the pole. Like a monkey on a stick. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go up that pole, Captain Manrin. Yeah. You're too young to die. Let me go, sir. Thank you very much, Jones, but... I must go. Here we go. <laughs> oh, uh, I forgot to tell you. You can't walk in them. They're only for climbing. Pike, carry me. What, by myself? Hodges, help Pike carry me. Oh, do no such thing. I'm a non-competent. I'm keeping out of it. I'm ordering you to carry me. Why don't you shoot him, Mr. Manning? Go on, <laughs> get up and shoot him. I think he's yellow, don't you? Of course he's yellow. Yeah. 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 All right, all right, I'll do it. Come on, then. <laughs> right, keep back the rest of you. Don't want to risk too many lives. All right. <laughs> this bomb down in two shakes of a lamb's tail. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good boy. It's a 
supposed to be slack. to go about his business. <laughs> Would you move on, please? I only asked if you want any help. But we don't, so just clear off, will you? That's nice. Ask a blasted civil question or get a blasted load of cheek. Want to borrow a safety pin, mate? Get out of it! <laughs> All blast abuse. Don't worry, mate, I'm going. Just as soon as I got these blasted gears pointed out. Get in! Blasted me! Get blasted in! Mr. Speaker, sir, I've got an idea. Why don't we take the furniture on that van and build it up and up and up until it's high enough to reach the bomb? Well done, Joe. Wilson, stop that van. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> there, that's the best I can blast to do. Right, up you go, boy. <laughs> Going up there, it's all wobbly. <laughs> then we got that wobbly tire of furniture. If it wasn't for my rheumatics, I'd, I'd be shitting up there like grease lightning. Ah, <laughs> uh, I. And if I'd good eyesight, I'd be up there like a shot. Aren't you ashamed of yourself, boy? These men are three times your age. Go on, Frank, show us what you're made of. You'll see what I'm made of. I'll be spread all over the road. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'll go. Uncle Arthur? Yes? Mum's gonna hear all about this. <laughs> Go on, Frank, get up. <laughs> oh, get on, boy. <laughs> Mr. Mannering. It's not high enough. Why don't we jack it up, sir? We're not giving in now. No, I mean jack the lorry up. Oh, I see. Yes, that's a very good idea. Get a jack. <laughs> I hope you know what you're blasted doing, mate. Five blasted pounds it's blasted bones to cost me. Hold on, Pike. We're going to lift you up. say when I go and say this. It's no use, Wilson. I have to think of something else. Well, I think I've got a solution, sir. Uh, you remember yesterday when we stopped because the road was up? Remember that? And you told me that I hadn't got a scientific mind, and then you had to drive over the, uh, the, uh, uh with the T. Yes, get, get on with it. Yes, well, there was a crane there. Now, why don't we use that? A good idea. 
Trader, Sponge, go get the train. All right, come on. Good luck, Jonesy. Yes, good luck, Jones. Thank you, sir. Thank All you. right, take it away. I can't quite reach it, sir. I I'm going to have to climb onto the pole. Be very careful, Jones. That man's as brave as a lion. <laughs> <laughs> Porridge, Frank. Not such a stupid boy after all, am I, Mr. Menring? No. Oh, I'm sorry, Pike. Good job I didn't have kippers for breakfast. <laughs> Menring? How am I going to get down? Don't worry, Jones. We'll think of something. But suppose I get a shock? You can't get a shock. Unless somebody makes a telephone call. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I think... I think someone's on the line now. <laughs> Yeah. 